Hello, hello, wonderful children, wonderful adults, wonderful humans, earthlings. Welcome to another math video. I'm happy you Rockstar showed up so that we could talk about the real number system. Let's go, let's go. I'm excited. How about this? What do you call a bear with no ears? B. E-A-R-S is in the word bears, so you just have the B, so you call it B. Let's go! <laughs> yeah, even I admit that one was a little cheesy. All right, let's get started. Today, we are going to work on understanding the subsets of the real numbers, of the real number system, and then classify and explain those subsets. Okay, so here's our goal. Um, let's talk a little bit about vocabulary. First of all, just so we make sure we understand that word subset and how it works, okay? So part of another set. So subset simply means it's part of another set. So if you think outside of the number system, let's get creative. Let's say um, we have this set of people. Let's change that color again. I don't like the yellow. Um, let's do We have this subset called humans. And then inside of this subset, we have people, this group in here, that loves the Yankees, all right, the New York Yankees. They are humans, and they love the Yankees. So this is a subset of the humans that love Yankees, all right? Um, you could break it down by, like, movies. You could break it down by just about anything. So if you have this subset of people that go to your school, and this subset loves Marvel movies, this subset loves... Um, non-Marvel movies, okay? But then you have this other subset in here that loves movies. So they're all people at your school. That's that whole group. This bigger group right here inside there is people that like movies. And inside, that's a subset of the people at your school. And this is a subset of your school that likes Marvel movies, but also likes movies and also is part of your school. Okay, so a subset is just part of a set and contained in a larger set. Okay, and so for our system, when we're talking about subsets in the real number system, we're looking at um, this big B would be a big set, okay? Actually, I'm not going to go into detail of what it means in the real number system. I just want you to show we have this big set B, okay? One, two, three, four, five. And then we have a subset of B, which is this A is a subset, which basically just means of the big set of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to take this little subset B right here that is one, two, and three, and they're gonna be contained in some sort of other idea or you know, maybe they're just a, a subset that we need to pull out of there because they have something in common, okay? And when you look at it as it's written example, the big set B is one, two, three, four, and five. And so A is a subset of B, which is you put these funny little bracket guys in here and it's one, two, three is a subset of the bigger uh, set, which is B. Okay. Another vocabulary word, okay? We have quite a few vocabulary words in this lesson, so we're going to fly through them. But natural number. Natural number is the most basic. This is when you were a tiny little person and the people gave, your parents or someone gave you um, just the ability to count. So you were just counting one, two, three, four, just counting numbers. That's what natural numbers are. They are simply the numbers that you count with. There's no negative numbers in here and there's no zero. It's just the counting numbers. Next is a whole number. Okay, it's all those counting numbers we just talked about. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, forever, on into infinity. But it's also add the zero. No negative numbers, no fractions, no decimals, just zero, one, two, three, four, five, and as long as you can count. Next, we have integers. I have a video on integers. If you haven't watched it, you should go check it out. Dun, dun, dun. Integers. Okay, let's go back. It's all those counting numbers. All right, so we still have the counting numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, forever. Then we added this zero, which means it's all the whole numbers. It's zero, one, two, three, four, blah, 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 blah. And it's also the opposites or the negative um, counterparts to our natural numbers. So for every one, there's a negative one. For every two, there's a negative two. For every three, there's a negative three. For every four, there's a negative four. For every five, there's a negative five. And so on, and so on, and so on. Again, no fractions. No decimals, um, just whole numbers and their opposites. Okay, then we got rational numbers. Okay, I have a video on rational numbers. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Dun, dun, dun. Rational numbers are all those numbers I just talked about. So all your integers, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, as far as you can go. And then the negative versions of all those. But then also, yes, now we're going to add fractions. Okay, a fraction we can add as long as that fraction 
has a whole number on the top or bottom. It can't have a decimal. So it can't be 3.7 over 4. That would make it an irrational number. Okay, we're focused on um, rational numbers right now. It can be a decimal as long as that decimal terminates, which means it stops. Like, for example, the one you see there, 2.78. It stops. There's nothing after that. That's fine. It can also be a decimal if it has a repeating pattern because it's rational and that rational and patterns kind of go hand in hand. That makes sense. It seems rational. So that one we see 3.8888888, it goes on forever, but it's a pattern. So that's rational. And this one next to it is 2.32323232322. Do you see the pattern back and forth between the three two? That's a repeating decimal. So repeating decimals and terminating decimals and fractions and all of our whole numbers, natural numbers, and integers, all of those together make up the rational number. So it's a whole bunch of different types of numbers. And finally, we have the irrational numbers. Okay, these are like in their own kind of category because they have like a simple kind of deal. They are simply the numbers that are have a decimal and then that decimal goes on forever with no pattern makes no sense you can't memorize it because it goes on forever and ever without a pattern like pi okay if you type in pi and you look it up it's most people just think pi 3.14 but those decimals really go those numbers after 3.14 go on forever and there's no repeating pattern okay then we got this radical expression right here square root of seven okay the square root of any non-perfect square is gonna when you try to find the answer it's going to be a decimal that goes on forever so like if we had the square root of 16, that's four. Okay, that's rational, that makes sense. The square root of seven is not a perfect square. I have a video on perfect squares. If you haven't checked it out, go look at it, yay! And then finally, if you just look at a decimal that goes on forever without a pattern, how do we know it goes on forever? Dot, 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 dot. That just tells you it goes on forever. And if you don't see any line over the top like that, that means there's no repeating. There's no repeating involved in it, so there's no passion, pa uh, pattern. All of these go on forever, which seems irrational. That's why they're irrational numbers. Okay, so now let's think about them in the in, uh, subsets. Okay, so we're going to head towards that subset thing I talked about. First of all, vocabulary word we just talked about is a natural number. That is all the numbers that you count with. Don't use zero in this one, just positive numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, forever and ever. Next, you have your whole numbers, which we already talked about. It's all those counting numbers, but just add the zero. Okay, so what you're noticing right now, hopefully, is that we are forming a big picture of all the different types of numbers, and we're forming a picture of the subsets. <clears throat> so you can see that whole numbers is all these numbers. Natural numbers is actually a subset of the whole numbers because all the numbers they have are contained in there. I have a better picture that's going to show you that in a second, okay? So let's just keep going through what we know. Then finally, or next, we have integers. And integers are all the whole numbers, plus their opposites. We already talked about this. Then we have rational numbers, which are all those things we already mentioned. All the integers, all the whole numbers, all the natural numbers, as well as fractions that don't have uh, decimals in them. And then decimals that uh, have a pattern, or decimals that, um, you can see this one right here. It doesn't look like it, that small picture, but it's 0.142. 857, 142, 857, 142, 857. So either it terminates like this 0. 0.5 or it goes on forever, but it has a pattern. That makes it rational, okay? And then next we have the irrational numbers, okay? And they're the ones that go on forever without repeating and they make no sense or any non-perfect square in a rational expression. So now let's see them as a whole system, okay? Let's see them as a whole system. Now I want you to think about the real number system, which is pretty much just all the numbers that we kind of play with, that you use in everyday life, or even just in math class. You know, you're using fractions, you're using decimals, you're using radical expressions, you're using squares, the square roots, you're using positives, you're using negatives. All those types of numbers are just called real numbers. So if you can imagine this box that I have very ugly colored in, if you think of that box having all the numbers that you can, um, count as real numbers so everything okay then we take that numbers and we go in and we circle a subset this is a subset of all those numbers that is our natural numbers or our counting numbers so you see inside of that circle it is just positive numbers that don't have fractions and decimals 
But there's a whole lot more in that subset, right? Yes. These are just the ones I'm giving you an example of, okay? And then we can say, all right, here's another subset, which is our whole numbers, okay? Our whole numbers, I want you to look at this. I'm gonna erase the things so that you can kind of see this better. The whole numbers contain all of the natural, see how that circle's inside of the whole number circle? Here's our whole number circle. The natural number's inside of it. So the whole number includes every natural number that we can think of, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and as far as we can go. And it also just really adds that zero to it. That's why the zero is not contained in this circle because it's not a natural number. It is a whole number. But all natural numbers are also whole numbers. And you can see how this pattern keeps going. So now we have integers out here. Integers are all those positive and negative numbers that are whole numbers. And then also zero. And you can see, you're like, wait a second, dude. You told me fractions were not integers. Well, they're not. Unless that fraction right there, which is negative 8 over 2, can be simplified. And when you simplify this fraction, if we have 8 halves, if you let's just imagine 8 half apples sitting on this table, we put them all back together, those 8 halves are going to form 4. And since it was a negative, it stays a negative. Is negative 4 an integer? Yeah. It's one of the counting numbers that is its opposite. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. So that's why that's there. But then also you said, dude, you said something about radical expressions. They are irrational because they don't make sense. I said, yes, this is a radical expression that doesn't make sense because that six is not a whole number. However, that four is a, I'm sorry, that six is not a perfect square. That four is a perfect square. What is the square root of four? Well, it's two times two. So the answer is two. Is two an integer? Uh, yeah, is, so that's why the square root of four works right there. Okay, and then we go out here to the rational numbers, which is, what is the rational number? Well, it's every natural number, it's all of these. It's every whole number, it's all of these. It's every integer, it's all of these. And it's fractions that terminate. I'm sorry, decimals that terminate, and it's fractions that do not have a decimal contained in the uh, fraction. And it's also uh, decimals that repeat. So we could act like this 1.5, we could put a little line there and say that's 1.5555555 because it repeats. And then over here on its own is this subset of the real numbers. Notice it is not involved in this circle because none of these numbers are irrational. All of them are rational numbers. This little guy over here has its own category and it's just the rational expressions that are not perfect squares, okay? And so if I take all of these and I solve them on a calculator, they're gonna give me a decimal that goes on forever and ever without a pattern. And the most popular, the cool guy of the club in the irrational numbers is that little guy called pi. See how that works? So the real number system is that big section of numbers all together, and these are all of its subsets. All right, so now let's look at these and let's just categorize them. So now that you know all that, and you can look at your notes if you need to, go ahead and fill this out. Pause the video if you need to, fill this out and just put a check mark where you think each one of these goes. All right, well, rational numbers, point zero point two one nine five. That's a, that's a decimal that stops. That makes sense. That's a terminating decimal, rational. The square root of 13, 13 is not a perfect square, so that means the answer to that is gonna be a decimal that goes on forever. That's irrational, that's bonkers. Zero is a whole number. One, two, three, four, five counting numbers and zero, that's rational. Whole numbers are a subset of rational numbers, so that works. 5.73512 dot, 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 that means it's a decimal that goes on forever. Crazy, that's bonkers, that's irrational. The opposite of the square root of 91. 91 is not a perfect square. If you haven't got your squares memorized, you may have to figure that out on a piece of paper, but that is not a perfect square, which means it's a decimal that will go on forever. Negative 2.4242424. I see that 4.2 pattern there. That's a decimal that has a pattern. That makes sense. The square root of 64. What is the square root of 64? Well, 8 times 8 is 64. That means the answer is 8. And 8 is a counting number. It's an integer. It's a whole number. It's a rational number. And then finally, that cool guy in the irrational club right there, pi, because it's a decimal that goes on forever, is irrational. Get out of here. Okay? Let's try one more little section. Now classify each given number as a member of a particular subset or subsets. 
So what you're going to do here is look at these numbers and put a check mark in every box they should go into. Some of them will have one box, some of them will have a lot of boxes, some of them will have two boxes. <clears throat> so, 0.2195 dot dot dot, that goes on forever. That's an irrational number, right? And it's nothing else. Irrational numbers are their own set of numbers. And now we got this radical expression, the square root of 100, the opposite of the square root of 100, which is what? What's the square root of 100? That's 10, okay? So that's 10, but it's also the opposite of that. So the answer that we're looking for to kind of play around with is negative 10. Where does negative 10 go? Is that, so I always start over here on the right. Is that a, is that a natural number? Is square root of, or I'm sorry, is negative 10 a natural number? No, because it's negative. Natural numbers are only our positive counting numbers. Is it a whole number? No, a whole number is all of our natural numbers plus zero. Is it an integer? Yes because it's an integer is our natural numbers and zero and their opposite. So it's our negative whole numbers. So boom. Is it a rational number? Absolutely. So you should have filled in those two boxes. Here we got a fraction, 21 thirds. But we also have a fraction that says 21 divided by three. What is 21 divided by three? Bing, da, da, ba, 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 ba. At seven, you are correct. Is seven a natural number? For sure, it's a counting number. Is seven a whole number? Absolutely. Is seven an integer? Absolutely. Is seven a rational number? Absolutely. Okay. Um, let me get rid of that last little check mark because it's going to mess with our overall chart. Just calm down a little bit, Tal, and let's get rolling. Let's get that little guy right there. Okay, now we have a decimal, a negative decimal, negative 7.232. Don't let that negative number freak you out. A lot of kids see negative decimal. Well, that's got to be irrational. No. We're just looking at the decimal side of it, and that 232 stops. It's a terminating decimal. So it's definitely a rational number. Is it a natural number? No, because it's got a decimal. Is it a whole number? No, because it's got a decimal. Is it an integer? No, because it's got a decimal. All right. Finally, the square root of 15, is that a perfect square? Nope. 16 is a perfect square because 4 times 4 is 16. So this is a radical expression that's not a square number, and the rule tells us that that's going to be irrational because that decimal is going to go on forever. You guys are ready to subset with the best of them. I can feel it. Um, so take your time. Remember to really break down the decimal thing. Is it going on forever and ever with no pattern? That's irrational. It terminates and it's a pattern. Totally cool. I get that. That's rational. If you get a fraction, make sure that fraction can't be simplified down into an integer or a whole number or uh, anything like that. Just look at each number carefully. All right. Thank you guys are ready. I really appreciate you guys stopping by. Um, what happened when the turkey got in a fight? He got the stuffing knocked out of him. That's a turkey joke. Turkeys. And now I need to go eat lunch.